In this video, I will show you my journey to Bosnia and Herzegovina, one of the most unusual countries in Europe. Bosnia and Herzegovina is located on the Balkan Peninsula, being surrounded by Croatia, Serbia and Montenegro. The name of the country consists of words denoting historical regions united in one country – Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia is the northern region of Bosnia and Herzegovina, encompassing roughly 81% of the country. The region of Herzegovina is situated to the south of Bosnia. The two regions have formed a geopolitical entity since medieval times. Each region had its own governance and local authorities. Both regions have historical ties to different cultures and religious communities. Bosnia has a mix of Bosniaks, Bosnian Muslims, Serbs, Orthodox Christians and Croats – Catholics. Following the disintegration of Yugoslavia in the 1990s, Bosnia and Herzegovina became an independent country. It was established as a federal state with two entities – the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is mainly Bosniak and Croat, and the Republika Srpska, which is predominantly Serb. During the first years of independence, ethnic diversity played a cruel trick on Bosnia and Herzegovina. In 1992, the Bosnian war began between the armed groups of Serbs, Bosnian Muslims and Croats. It lasted three years and was accompanied by ethnic cleansing. Estimates suggest around 100,000 people were killed during the war and over 2.2 million people were displaced. I visited Bosnia and Herzegovina in December 2022 to see local sites, ride freight trains and interact with local people. I came to the country through the land border with Montenegro. In the Montenegrin city of Nikšić, I caught a driver who gave me a lift to the city of Mostar, the unofficial center of the historical region of Herzegovina. Alright, we have successfully crossed the border between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro. Now we are in Bosnia, and to be precise, in uh, its region, which is called uh, Republika Srpska. This is kind of the border town, which is called Bilecia. More than a hundred of kilometers left to Mostar, so we'll be there in a couple of hours. Javier. Yeah. Tiny mosque. And look at on that oh, is a uh, Orthodox church. So there are both mosque and the uh, church in one village. Yes. So we are gradually moving towards Moster. Uh, the road goes in this valley between massive mountains. It's quite deserted, there is not that much cars neither to nor from Moster. So we moved from Orthodox to Catholic part. No, that no? is only uh, Catholic. Only in this town? Or? Only on this place. Okay, this place. thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, have a nice trip today. Yeah, thank you. See ya. Bye. Congratulations, guys! I have successfully made it to Mostar by just one car from Nikšić, Montenegro. So, we are going to explore this wonderful historical town in southern Bosnia and Herzegovina for next couple of days. There is a wonderful view from the road that connects Mostar with the capital city of Bosnia, with Sarajevo. While driving across Bosnia and Herzegovina, it seemed that we crossed different countries. Because in different municipalities there were different flags waving on the streets. There were like Serbian flag, Croatian flag. And finally here they see the actual flag of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The closest site to me in Mostar turned out to be the old bridge, also known as Mostar Bridge, that crossed the river Neretva and connected the two parts of the city. In November 1993 the bridge collapsed due to shelling by the Croatian Defense Council during the croat bosniak War. The reconstructed bridge opened in July 2004. There is a lot of artifacts of Bosnian war in Mostar. Some buildings that were shelled and bombed are still on city streets. They are not reconstructed, not restored. They are kind of the memorials reminding of the events happening here. Mostar is so unusual city because of the coexistence of Islamic and uh, Christian cultures. Like you look here and see a typical European city, but then you turn the camera and it turns out that you're kind of in Turkey, you know, the architecture is a bit different, a bit orient. The river Neretva that flows across Mostar is so hectic today after the torrential rain that happened this night. There are some more ruins of buildings that were destroyed during the Bosnian civilian war. 
So despite the peaceful atmosphere in Mostar, now there is still a number of places devoted to Bosnian war, like this uh, square constructed as a memorial to the dead Spanish United Nations peacekeepers. There is uh, a memorial with their names. In Mostar there is a monument to Bruce Lee, a well-known actor. The so-called Sniper Tower should be mentioned among abandoned buildings damaged during the war in Mostar. Before the Bosnian War, this building housed a bank, but during the hostilities it was captured by snipers who shoot at people. So depending on the national majority, in different settlements of Bosnia and Herzegovina, there are flags of these uh, uh, national majorities. For example, in Croatian villages and towns, there are Croatian flags everywhere. See some Croatian and even Israeli flag, flags. But at the same time, if you look on the mountain, there is a massive flag of uh, Bosnia itself. So I can claim that new part of the city is Croatian and old part is uh, of Bosnians, is uh, Muslim basically, because all of the mosques are located there. There is even a placard of Croatian political party. This is a partisan cemetery in Mostar. Stones that were used during the construction of this cemetery sponged the moisture and turned brown and black. Now you probably hear the bell of a Catholic church, but at the same time, somewhere old town of Mostar, there is Muslim prayer, and it's barely hearable from this point. I can only hear the sound of bells. After sightseeing in Mostar, I went to a guest house that I had booked. It began to rain heavily, so I went outside again only in the evening. Such a wonderful illumination of the old bridge in Mostar. And despite the fact that this is Friday evening, there is almost no people. So I can conclude that this city is a popular tourist destination, particularly in summer and maybe in autumn. I would say that the old town of Mostar is a mix of something Turkish and something European in terms of architecture and vibe. Oh yeah, it's clear that there is some Turkish influence. Even a Turkish flag is waving on the facade of one of the buildings here in the old town. But also there are ATMs of Turkish bank Ziraat. It's early morning in Mostar and today I'm leaving this city for Sarajevo, the capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina. What a beauty! These are the settlements and dates when there were severe massacres organized by Serbian population of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They basically killed a local Muslim population there. In six hours I hitchhiked only 70 kilometers from Mostar to the town of Konitz, halfway to Sarajevo. At the same time, the weather turned bad and it began to get dark, so I covered the remaining distance to Sarajevo by train, and the following day I started exploring the capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's early Sunday morning in the capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina in Sarajevo. I'm staying in front of this wonderful Catholic cathedral which is located straight next to the house where I have an apartment today. So we are going to walk around interesting places of the city for the next couple of days. There is also a mix of ethnicities in Sarajevo, so there are some Catholic districts and some Muslim one, like here. Literally like Istanbul. There is a war cemetery almost in the downtown of Sarajevo. The numbers like 1992 and 1994 are recognizable on these graveyards. So yeah, it's all a cemetery devoted to the victims of Bosnian war. So the higher we go upstairs, the more new graveyards appear. It's not even 90s, it's 2001. I need to say that there is a wonderful panoramic view on the old town of Sarajevo from this mountain where the cemetery is located. There is a monument to a famous Kazakh singer and musician, Abai Kunanbaev. It's really a prominent person in Kazakhstan because even the subway station in Almaty, the biggest Kazakh city, and also the avenue is named after him. There is an artificial waterfall on this river and uh, also there is a jumping point for jumpers. The city hall of Sarajevo is literally located in Sarai. Sarai means a palace. It's so dope. Look at these elements of architecture, these columns, 
these decorations. There is a cableway in Sarajevo and by using it you can get up to one of the nearby mountains. I took the cable car to the top of Mount Trebevich in southern Sarajevo to explore the abandoned bobsleigh and luge track that was constructed for the Winter Olympic Games held in Sarajevo in 1984. In the early 1990s, during the events of the Bosnian War, the bobsleigh track was used to organize artillery firing points. As a result, it was damaged and could not longer be used. Nowadays, it is one of the most peculiar sites of the city. Right now, we are at the starting point of the abandoned bobsleigh track. Bobsleigh is a winter olympic sport, which is basically like racing on sleigh. So imagine that there is a massive sleigh for uh, three, four people. They are sitting here and uh, another person is accelerating this sleigh. They run, they run, they run, they run. Here, this person who is accelerating jumps into the sleigh and then they all go down this line and who spent less time covering this track those is the winner so when sleigh cross the starting point they have already accelerated a bit and uh, their speed is gradually increasing that's why these turns are a bit this you know because when sleigh goes into this turn uh, it turns on like uh, 45 maybe sometimes 60 degrees right so it's kind of a sharp turn. So due to the fact that uh, bobsleigh track itself is just bare concrete, local artists decided to somehow improve this place and they organized this sort of open-air art exhibition here. And paintings are so wonderful and they're fresh. They are fresh. Look, this one was painted in 2022. So this year. Well, perhaps it was a different starting point that was located straight here. Perhaps these are the ruins of this starting point. But what I don't understand is the purpose of this track that deviates left, because it goes upstairs and it goes down from here and from here. While gradually going down, the speed of the bobsleigh is increasing and uh, Therefore, the radius of uh, this curve is also increasing. You can see how high is this wall. This is the second last turn before the finish line. This curve is the longest one, most definitely. We have reached the flat stretch of this track. Further, it goes a bit upstairs to let the bobsleigh slow down. We have checked the bobsleigh track and now let's go back to the city. Same as in Mastar, there is an old Latin bridge in Sarajevo and most likely this one survived the Bosnian War. Some traces of shellings happened here during Bosnian War have still been preserved in the city. Aside from the cable car, there is another exotic means of transport in Sarajevo. This is funicular. It didn't operate for a long time after Bosnian War, I guess. And now it's uh, kind of reconstructed and operate. There is such a tiny car, but there is no need in a bigger one because it uh, lifts passenger only on the parallel street up the hill. Despite the fact that there are two wagons of the funicular, only one of them is operating, probably because of low passenger traffic. Among the sites of Sarajevo, monuments dedicated to the era of the Bosnian War stand apart. One of the significant events of the war was the Siege of Sarajevo, which lasted 1425 days almost four years, from April 1992 to February 1996. During the siege, 160,000 tons of humanitarian supplies were delivered to the people of Sarajevo, including food and medicine. But such aid was not always welcome. There is a memorial to the food aid delivered during the siege of Sarajevo. In the opinion of the monument's creator, the aid was of the wrong kind. Some food was left over from the Vietnam War and over 20 years expired. Some consisted of pork for the half-Muslim country and in popular legend refused by dogs and cats. After the war, the grateful citizens of Sarajevo thanked the international community with this meter-long golden beef tin. In addition to this monument, there were some military vehicles used during the war. There is a military technique that was used in Bosnian war, like this tank, these howitzers. There is also a military train and uh, there is also a kind of a tool to destroy cross ties. They were destroyed by these metal thing. Traveling around Bosnia and Herzegovina, it is simply impossible to ignore the theme of war. The war was a complex conflict with deep historical, ethnic and political roots. 
Here are some key factors that contributed to the start of the Bosnian War. Bosnia and Herzegovina, located in the Balkans, has a long and intricate history of ethnic and religious divisions. The region was part of the Ottoman Empire for centuries, and different ethnic groups such as Bosniaks, Bosnian Muslims, Serbs and Croats lived together but with a history of tensions. In the early 1990s, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, a multi-ethnic federation, began to disintegrate due to nationalist sentiments and political power struggles. Slovenia, Croatia and Macedonia declared independence in 1991, followed by Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1992. The rise of nationalism among different ethnic groups in Bosnia further exacerbated tensions. Bosnian Serbs, led by political leaders such as Radovan Karadzic and backed by the Serbian government under Slobodan Milosevic, sought to create their separate state within Bosnia, known as Republika Srpska. Similarly, Bosnian Croats also pursued their nationalist aspirations. In March 1992, Bosnia and Herzegovina held a referendum on independence, which was boycotted by Bosnian Serbs who opposed independence. Following the referendum's results in favor of independence, the Bosnian Serbs, with the support of the Yugoslav People's Army, launched an armed rebellion leading to the outbreak of the war. As the war unfolded, all sides engaged in brutal actions, including ethnic cleansing and war crimes against civilians. Massacres and atrocities occurred, including the infamous Serbian genocide in 1995, where Bosnian Serb forces killed thousands of Bosniak men and boys. The Bosnian War was a complex and tragic conflict driven by deep-seated historical and ethnic divisions, power struggles and the disintegration of Yugoslavia. The war ended with the Dayton Agreement in December 1995, which established Bosnia and Herzegovina as a federal state with two entities, the Bosnia Croat Federation and the Republika Srpska. However, the scars of the war continue to affect the region to this day. early morning in Sarajevo and today I'm finally leaving this city. The task for today is to reach the second largest city in Bosnia and Herzegovina which is called Banja Luka. It is located in different uh, sort of region within the country. So now we are in Federation Bosnia and I'm going to move to uh, Respublika Srpska. the outskirts of Sarajevo and I didn't even wait for a bus. Now I mean my favorite highways will try to hitchhike through these uh, difficult conditions. So it's fog on the street, it's not yet bright and the traffic is quite intense at this point so it's less possibility that, that a car will stop but we'll still try. Two hours later. It's two hours of hitchhike and I have only managed to leave Sarajevo and get to the major highway that leads towards the boy and Banja Luka. And what a wonderful sign saying that hitchhiking is forbidden here, but who cares? Anyway, I need to somehow get to that places. So, so we will just ignore this prohibition and carry on moving, hopefully. I'm finally in Banja Luka. Managed to hitchhike here in six hours from Sarajevo. So I will spend the rest several hours until the dusk comes down to explore the city and I will spend the night here in Banja Luka and then tomorrow we will try to train hop from here in the direction of Sarajevo. By the way, I was dropped off near a Gazprom gas station. Gazprom is quite widespread here in Bosnia as well as in Serbia. What is the gas prices for today? Gas number 100 costs almost 3 Bosnian marks, which is 1.5 euros. Gas number 95, 2.57. As soon as we are in Serbian part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Cyrillic signs are way more common here. Also, Islam is one of the religions of Bosnia and Herzegovina here in Respublika Srpska. Muslims are the minority, so there are mostly Orthodox residents. However, there is still a number of uh, mosques in the city of Banja Luka. As in the most ancient European cities and towns in Banja Luka, there is such a wonderful fortress. The fortress in its current look appeared here at the very end of 16th century, uh, during the occupation of this territory by Turkish Empire. There is a Catholic church in Banja Luka of unusual architecture. 
have never seen something like that before. There is that much Serbian flags and not a single flag of Bosnia and Herzegovina. That is a railway station in Banja Luka. At first glance, there is not that much trains. There is a passenger one near the platform, which is likely to depart really soon. Well, we are not going to catch freight trains from here today, because the sun is about to go down soon. I will try to do it tomorrow. And also, I'm using the fact is that there is no direct train to Sarajevo, to the capital city of Bosnia, despite the fact that there is a direct railway track there. Well, probably because of some misunderstandings between uh, Respublika Srpska and Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, somehow they haven't managed to negotiate this issue in terms of railway connection between two major cities. Good morning, guys, from Banja Luka. I spent the night here. Now I'm walking towards the train station, so I guess the earlier I come, the more chances I will have to catch a freight train from here. I went to the railway station to leave Banja Luka by freight train. In the afternoon, I managed to catch a freight train by which I reached the city of Daboy in the south of the Republika Srpska. Recently, YouTube has begun actively blocking and deleting videos of train hopping because they show dangerous actions. To watch the full video with the train hopping part, join me on Patreon via the link in the description of this video. And now, let's move to the town of Daboy, where I got by freight train from Banja Luka. Alright, I got off my train 3 kilometers before Daboy, so I will just walk them, but at least it will not be caught 100%. I'm finishing my croissant that I bought today in the morning, but at the same time the freight train is passing by me. This is a coal train, and the coal is right over there. The town of Daboy, located in Serb Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, due to the fact that I don't have any gear to overnight uh, in the wilderness somewhere, so I don't have tent, don't have sleeping bag, that's why I just uh, rented an apartment for one night. All right, guys, let me present you the room tour of a single bedroom apartment in the town of Daboy, Republika Srpska. So this is the actual room, and I was so surprised that the TV was turned on by the owner he just left and this is russian tv channel like there are like uh, i don't know they all speak russian here uh, on the tv i mean this is a tiny kitchen and yeah bathroom with the toilet tomorrow we'll need to just take a random freight train towards sarajevo or maybe not towards sarajevo we will see Before leaving the city, I visited Daboy Castle. There is the panoramic view on Daboy from here. There is actually the house where I stayed at. Quite a typical uh, Balkan town, I'd say. Railway station is behind these high rises. In the morning, I walked around the city for a bit and then went to the local railway station. When I arrived at the station, there were no trains ready to leave. About an hour later, I left Daboy by a freight train that departed towards Sarajevo. However, my train did not reach the capital city. It was abandoned an hour and a half drive from Daboy in the small town of Zavidovici. Oh, the locomotive stops next to the railway station building again. Wonderful! My train has been abandoned in Bosnia nowhere. can't say that this is the most unexpected result of this train hopping because, well, there was no cargo in the wagons and the wagons were not from coal but from ore. If it was like with some cargo, then I could imagine that it was going to Sarajevo, let's say, but there was no cargo. This train was definitely going towards uh, Croatia and maybe soon it will be picked up by a different locomotive. That's the station where my train was abandoned, Zavidovici. Well, I will try to hitch out from this town towards Sarajevo. If I manage to catch a cart that goes to Sarajevo, I will go with it. There is such an interesting pedestrian bridge 
over Bosna River, one of the main rivers in Bosnia and Herzegovina. This town seems to be partly Croatian, partly like Bosnian, so there are both uh, Catholic cathedrals, Catholic churches and uh, mosques. So hitchhiking goes pretty well. In 15 minutes I managed to stop the first car. Now we are in the town of Zepce. There is like the bridge over Bosna River that I have already shown to you. Yeah, it's also partly Croatian, partly Bosnian. There is this wonderful Catholic church. Oh yeah, and the driver, if you don't mind, Sasha. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Ciao. See ya, ciao. Okay, cool, we are finally on the highway leading towards Sarajevo. It's still quite bright, so I have at least 40 minutes of the daylight. Hopefully I will catch a ride further. I managed to hitchhike to Sarajevo safe and sound, didn't wait for a long time at the last spot. I was swiftly picked up by a truck driver who delivered me straight to the outskirts of Sarajevo. Then I just took a bus to the city center and now I'm going to the same hostel where I stayed uh, like when it was the first time in here. So the plan for tomorrow is to try to catch southbound train. The third day of traveling across Bosnia by freight trains began in Sarajevo. I woke up early in the morning to be at the railway station by sunrise. I was lucky to sneak into the yard unseen, thanks to fog. I found a comfortable observation spot in an abandoned passenger car. After a couple of hours of waiting, I successfully left Sarajevo by a southbound freight train. The section of the railway between Sarajevo and the town of Konitz turned out to be the most picturesque in Bosnia. From the train I observed majestic mountains, viaducts and valleys. The terminal stop of the train turned out to be Konitz. I have already shown you this town on my way from Mastar to Sarajevo. In Konitz, the locomotive decoupled from my train, coupled to an oncoming train and pulled it in the direction of Sarajevo. Another trip on the freight train was short and ended abruptly. Yeah, now I see the locomotive is gone, so that's definitely the terminus. Sadly. So as soon as I anyway ended up in the right place, because after train hopping I was supposed to go to this particular town to Konitz to begin like the new stage of my adventures so it seems that we will just start it a bit earlier so today while hitchhiking from Mastar to Sarajevo at the beginning of my journey I met a Bosnian German named Ada who invited me to stay at his house in a remote village 30 kilometers from the town of Konitz we exchanged contacts and agreed to meet in Konitz in about a week when I arrived in Konitz by freight train I called Ada and in the evening of the same day he gave me a lift to his village the following day I woke up in the semi-abandoned village surrounded by beautiful mountains of Herzegovina. The next few days I explored the village and its surroundings. Sie alle heißen irgendwie? Nein. Nein? Nein. Heimo, komm. Komm, hier demo, Heimo. Komm, hier demo. Permanent population of this village is three people. So the guy who hosts me now uh, his cousin and another person living on that edge of the village. It is located in 20-30 kilometers from the city of Konitz and also in like 40 kilometers from the capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina from Sarajevo. But in summer the population of this place is increasing because some people from capital city and also from Konitz come here. So this is the main street of the village. As you can see the road is not paved but the asphalt covering begins really really soon here. The majority of the constructions in this village are made of uh, stone because there is just a lot of, of stones on like uh, outside just chaotically lying on the ground it's like natural stones so you can just get them process a little bit 
and turn them into houses like this one. Let's get a bit closer to this particular house which stays apart from the rest. There is the room and even some sofa, broken TV, some clothes, yeah, some pillows, but it's pretty much empty. Let's try to check other rooms. Book about management, I guess. Issued in Sarajevo in 1982. I see the smoke coming from this house, so it's likely that some people came here for a weekend. As soon as there is no snow, it's easy to get here. As soon as we are in Muslim part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, to be precise now, we are in Herzegovina, there is a Muslim cemetery. Some graves are dated like of 21st century, some of the graves dated back to 90s. This village is not exactly abandoned because people still live here in summer. That's why a number of buildings are in pretty good condition. Dobry dan. Dobry dan. Sam Rus putu pa Bosni. Bosni, yes. Ivan. Omer. Amer. Ja gost. Gost Ado. Tu Ado onaj tamo, što drži kerovi. E tamo ti je on sine. Da, 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 da. Ktori Nemec. Ima, ima kerove male. Da, 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 e, e, psi. Yes. Psi, psi. Yes, yes. Kavu. A? Kavu. Kavu? A, davajte, da, Vesaća. da, super. Mogu sada sjesti? Može, može ih tu, može. Aha, može. super. A vi tu živete ili... Hardžić. Hardžić? Hardžić. E... Hardžić. Ovdje malo Ovdje. izašlo na vikend. E, tu je ještje jedan čovjek, da? Ktorý tam žije. Ja, ja. Dobre, chvála vám. Niko, 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 niko. Volíš si šečeriť? Aha, šečer. Volíš si za šečeriť? Aha, aha, jednu, jednu. Dobre. Volíš si za ti namažem krišku? Hm? Za ti namažem krišku? Крышку? Хлеба, хлеба. А, хлеб? Я, да едешь. А, э, в смысле, э, вы предлагаете? Или... Я си гладен. А, да, сам, сам гладен. Я. Л, да. Хочешь есть? Э, да, немного, немного. Да, да. Э, летом, в лете здесь много людей, да? Буде, буде. Летом? Буде. В зиме только вот... вот... В зиме еден само. Tamo na kraj sela. Uh -huh. Onaj tamo što je, ona je otšu. Uh -huh. Oselio. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ej, Miro, Miro. Ej, koja si ti. Ja, daj mu. A vi, ranjše, v prošlom, e, zdjez ne žili ili žili? Vi žili zdjez e, v Čehovičah? Ili to je prosto kak dom dla vikenda? Vikenda, vikenda. Uh -huh. Imamo mi živimo u Hadžićima. Tut moj drug Ado, aha, ktorý aha. tam živi. A Ado je moj rođak. Rodstvenik, da? Rođak. Aha. Yes. A vi kto je mu? Vi jevo... E... Njegov babo, njegov ba... otac, babo i moj od dva brata, djeca. Tut je džamija. Yes. Džamija e, radit? Ne, ra mm. ne radit. Ne radit. Nema niko. Все я отшла. Ради лет я зимы не ради. Сезон, когда есть люди с апреля плюс-минус, да, с апреля до осени. Есть. В апреле излазе вам и чем девятый месяц иду дол. Ага. Иду дол за детство Бога. Разумеем. Есть. Разумеем. Детство иду в школу и он масса купи. Я дино мы пенсионеры старые. <laughs> mi stari možemo izaći, a vi kao, kao mlad, koji Bog me ode doli, i djeco škola i sve. Dom zdravlja. Dom zdravlja. Dom zdravlja, da, gdje, gdje bližajši? Konjici, odavde je konjic. Konjica. Odavde je konjic. A mi imamo u Hadžićima. Prošlom, dom zdravlja bil u Čehovićev ili nijet? Nikada. Mi... Bilo, bilo je tamo, bilo je tamo, tamo. gdje je tamo ovaj rođak moj. Tamo bilo je bilo, je tamo gdje pa se srušilo. Bilo. U ratu sve srušili. Mm, uh -huh. Kad je rat bio sve, bila škola, bila blanta, bila, recimo, za omladinu sala. Uh -huh. Ali sad nema, sve srušili. 
I u nas je ovo bilo, pa sve se srušilo i ponovo išli. Aha. Vidiš, nismo još uradili. Aha, savsem novo dom, da. Da, da tek radimo, tek oko ovo. I've just been invited for a cup of coffee by that elderly gentleman and lady. It appeared that they came here for a weekend, but they live in a town close to Sarajevo, so it was like their summer house. And during Bosnian war it was completely destroyed, so now they are rebuilding it, like, from the very beginning. Uh, I discovered that this mosque only works in summer, when there are some people, but in winter it's closed completely. I see some random plantations in the village, so 100% that they plant cabbage, which is even visible here. Perhaps they even plant some potato, maybe carrot. I do like these kind of barns made of stone, just randomly put on each other. This roof made of metal sheets. It reminds me of some dwellings of gnomes, I don't know. It has so like it's such a peculiar form as from fairy tale. Due to the fact that this road runs around the whole village, there is a constant change of the scenery. So now we can see the village from a totally different perspective than it was like uh, 10 minutes ago. <coughs> Guck, das ist Brot von gestern. Ja? Aha. Brot von gestern. Das Brot ist frisch. Ganz frisch. Mhm. Willst du mit dem Finger? Mach mal mit dem Finger hier rein. Mit dem, damit du siehst. Guck, ganz frisch. Dieses Brot kostet 2 Mark. Also 1 Euro. Und die ganze Tüte kostet 5 Mark. Von gestern. Und das ist schlecht. Das ist äh, nicht so gut für, für, ähm, für uns Menschen. Ja? Dass so viel Brot weggeschmissen wird. Wir geben das den... Der, mein Cousin gibt das seinen Hunden, ja. Mhm. Er hat nicht so viel Geld und er füttert damit die Hunde dann. Dobro večer. Dobro večer, kako ste? Ivan iz Arabije, iz Dubaja, iz Dubaja. Ja. <laughs> Ivan, ja. Sein Opa und mein Opa waren Brüder. Mina zavut Zeynu. Zeynu. Zeynu, da. Da, da. Gde vi učili ruski jezik? Ruski konjic, gimnazija. Gimnazija. Da, da. Recimo. Moskva stolica Sovjetskog Sojuza, oče balšoj, krasivi gorodi. Znao bi da se malo posjeti i sve napadne. 50 jare su ne ja, ja. Da, samo vidim, ne mogu ovdje. Radim sa kravama ovim pa samo naj... Ispo iz takta. Ja arbeite fast 24 stunden. Er hat keine Zeit auf Toilette zu gehen. Er hat alleine 40 hat er jetzt. 40. Hordi. Kühe und Bullen zusammen. Silubavi. Aha. Ja. It's new day in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We are still in the mountains of this wonderful country, and today we are going to explore the remotest and also the highest village in Bosnia, which is called Lukamir. It's not that far from here, just uh, several kilometers, but the road is uh, fairly difficult, so it will take some time to get there. There is a lot of historical sites in this place, and also it's just beautiful when it comes to the nature, so I guess today is going to be an interesting adventure. While heading towards Lukamir, we made a stop near this couple of abandoned houses. This is not exactly the house, this is like the barn for cattle, made of stone as well. The roof is ruined totally. Well, these uh, dwellings have not been inhabited for at least 40 years, according to other words. There is the actual residential cabin. It was like a tiny house, probably for just one family but yeah totally ruined and right next to the house is the dwell with drinkable water oh! so we got straight into the cemetery to figure out when people died here and there is the only grave with the dates so this one is dated back to 1947. Okay, so this grave um, is for one person, for Avdo, who died in 1947, and there is the list of uh, person, probably members of the family, who uh, built this sort of the grave. Yes, but they built it in, in 1977. 
Yes, exactly. Uh, and this is the only grave that has the date. There is another interesting one without a date, without any information, but of an interesting form. Supported by some stones. Others are totally different, like typical Muslim graves. Uh, this sort of, um, I don't know, like pillars, concrete pillars. All right, we've got to look at village, the remotest, the oldest, and also the highest above the sea level settlement in the whole country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Look at this beauty. This is the outskirts, the very edge of the village. Is this Kreuz? Yeah. Deswegen habe ich dir gesagt, nicht Muslim. Städte sind ganz alte. Unsere alte Religion. Hier haben auch äh, Christen gelebt und ja. In dem Dorf wurden drei Filme gemacht. Oder, oder vier, vier, vier. Ähm, in einem der Filme, ähm, das ist nach dem Krieg gemacht, äh, das erzählt, der Film erzählt eine Geschichte über einen Mann, der hat Sarajevo verlassen und wohnt im Dorf. In dem Film kommt eine Szene vor, die geht über einen von diesen beiden Gräbern. Ich weiß nicht welcher. Äh, 93, das kann der sein. Ähm, er, er wurde von einem General umgebracht, getötet, äh, weil er nicht auf die Front wollte, weil ähm, es gab keinen Sinn für die Soldaten, auf diese Front zu gehen. Und der, Soldat, äh, der General hat ihn eiskalt getötet vor den anderen, als Warnung für die anderen, dass die hören müssen, dass die gehorchen müssen, dass die die Befehle ausführen müssen. Ja, das ist diese schlechte Seite des äh, Krieges. Krieg hat nur schlechte Seiten. Ähm, aber das war wirklich eine sehr schlechte Tat. Und dieser General, der wurde dafür nie verhaftet und nie zur Rechenschaft gezogen. Ja, das ist sehr traurig. Äh, das heißt, die Generäle können alles machen, was sie wollen, ähm, solange die, die unter den eigenen, in den eigenen Reihen sind. Ja. I have definitely found the best view on the whole village of Lukamir, which is also dead in winter. So I guess only a couple of people live here like year round. But anyway, in summer it's a very popular tourist destination. This is a very well known place of Bosnia Herzegovina. Look at this beauty! We are now at 1500 meters above sea level. Es gibt leichte Wasser und schwere Wasser. Hängt ab von den Mineralien, die drin sind. Und je schwerer die, die Mineralien sind, desto schwerer ist das Wasser. Mhm. Das heißt, wenn du von diesem Wasser ein Liter trinkst, ist nicht das gleiche, wie wenn du ein Liter in Deutschland trinkst. Oder ich weiß nicht, Russland, ich weiß nicht wie. Aber das ist leicht, äh, leichtes Wasser. Leichtes Wasser, ja. Ja, 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 gut. Aha, aha, tschüss. Alright guys, I have finally left the countryside of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which I honestly didn't expect to visit at the very beginning, but it happened and that's really cool. So I have spent approximately 12 days in Bosnia and Herzegovina and these countries are now to be wonderful. Everything, like people, nature, cities are also pretty interesting so i hope to return here one day probably in summer next time because daylight is so short in winter it's like 4 pm right now and sun is getting down so i guess nothing is going to happen in the next couple of days that i, that I will spend in sarajevo in the capital i will just wait for my flight and then new adventures will come see ya